stopping by, it's Laurie Bly DIY, and today we have a super cute country farmhouse shabby chic sunflower. The best part about it is you can actually change up the middle wreath so it would match any decor. And I did get most of the supplies at the Dollar Tree, which I will list below. And also, I did want to take this time to thank all my subscribers. I so appreciate each and every one of you, and I'm so happy that you're part of my YouTube family. And I would also like to ask that if you're new and you haven't subscribed, to please consider clicking the subscribe button. To begin, you're going to need approximately 250 bamboo skewers, a ruler, a pencil, and some type of a snipping tool. Using your ruler, you're going to measure the skewers at nine and a half inches, making sure that the pointy end is on the end that you're going to clip off. So once you locate the nine and a half inches, just use your pencil to mark the spot. And then with your clippers, you're going to clip the sharp ends off. And when you're clipping them off, be super careful because they do tend to be projectiles. So that you don't have to measure each skewer with your ruler, I used the first two as my guide and then just measured up the rest of the skewers against them and snipped them off. You're going to need two circular pieces of cardstock, one 8 inch and one 9 inch, and I did paint both of them. Using the 8 inch circle, you're then going to attach your cut skewers. Using your ruler, you're going to measure one half inch on the circle and then attach the skewer. Make sure it's the side that you snipped off with some hot glue. And you're going to basically start with a north, south, east, and west pattern. And you're going to continue using your ruler to measure the one half inch until you can see where there is a pattern and you can begin to follow it. You're going to lay one skewer down and then you're going to go on the opposite side and lay another skewer and then you're just going to continue this pattern completely around the circle until it's full. It's important to let the glue cool in between placing the skewers so that they remain in a straight pattern. And no two flowers are exactly alike, so you can decide how many of the skewers that you would like to place on it. And once you are finished, if you see any of the skewers that appear a little bit longer, just take your snipping tool and clip it down so it matches the rest of the flower. Then using my white spray paint, I sprayed the front and the back. As a hanger for the back, I then cut three 36 inch lengths of twine. I gathered up the three ends of the twine and knotted them together on each end. And then I folded it in half and knotted them together. So I had one complete piece of twine. I then placed it on the back of the flower in the middle and I used my glue gun to secure it in place. You could braid the twine or twist it. I just decided to go with something very simple and just use the three individual strands. To cover the back, you're then going to use your nine inch piece of cardstock. I ran a heavy coat of hot glue over the attached skewers, and then I placed my nine inch circle of cardstock over the top to cover them. Make sure your hanger is in place and then press it down firmly. Using one of the flower wind chimes, you're going to detach the wire hanger on the top and the little bell on the bottom. Using your white spray paint, you're going to completely cover the flower. I chose a medium gray acrylic paint 
as the accent color for my flower. I used a very, very light coat and then just ran my brush along the little ridges of the flower, just kind of accenting them. I also used my brush to accent the center of the flower. Spray your tin 10 inch serving tray with a coat of white spray paint. Once again, using your white spray paint, you're going to spray the underside of an eight inch tin dog bowl. Once the paint dried, I gave each of them two coats of Mod Podge just to protect the painted finish. I know you could use a clear coat to cover them, but the Mod Podge always seems to do a good job and sometimes the clear coat will tend to yellow. Once the pieces are completely dry, I'm then going to attach them with my E6000. Flipping the dog bowl over onto the unpainted side, I ran a bead of E6000 along the top edge of the dog bowl. I did give it a pretty thick coat and this is where it will be attaching to the serving tray. And once you're done, you're now ready to attach it to the serving tray. You're simply going to flip the dog bowl upside down and meet the serving tray on the inner edge, as you can see. You're now going to attach the flower to the top of the dog bowl. So I simply used my E6000, making sure I gave it a generous coat. I then turned the flower over and I pressed it on top of the dog bowl, making sure that it was completely centered. And once it was where I wanted it, I pressed all three of the pieces tightly together. And now to attach it to the top of the sun, I found the center point where I wanted to place it and then I used my E6000 to attach it. I just gave it a generous coat on top of the serving platter. I flipped it over and pressed it on the center of the sun and off camera I did have a heavy weight on it for about two hours to make sure they were all attached tightly together. For my farmhouse wreath I had a bunch of assorted leaves and some white flowers. I began to randomly hot glue the leaves onto the wreath, making sure that they were all heading in the same direction. And then I just continued to hot glue them on until the wreath was completely covered. Once the wreath was completely covered with leaves, I then used my white flowers. I popped them off of their little plastic centers and then I folded them up into a little cluster and I hot glued them randomly on the leaves. I continued to randomly add the white flowers until the wreath looked complete. And once my farmhouse wreath was complete, I then began to work on my floral wreath. I have so many assorted leaves and flowers left over from other projects, so I decided to use them on my wreath. I began hot gluing the assorted flowers on 
in a random pattern. I did make sure they were all heading in the same direction. And then I just added some leaves in here and there as accents. And once you have both of the wreaths complete, they are interchangeable on your sunflower. And because they're interchangeable, you don't need to attach them. They simply fit over the middle part of the flower. I couldn't decide if this project was a sun or a flower, so that's why I ended up calling it a sunflower. I hope you like this Dollar Tree sunflower. I had a blast hanging out with you and don't forget to click that subscribe button so we can hang out together again soon. Bye everybody.